If you're on the approach to land and you're noticing you're a bit high and will land beyond your desired touchdown point, there are a few things you can do to get lower. You can reduce power to idle, you can employ flaps, and you can even perform S-turns to eat up more altitude, but if all that fails, you have a great way to lose altitude fast without picking up extra airspeed. It's called a forward slip to land. We looked at slips when we were doing crosswind landings. In order to land in a crosswind, the aileron and rudders need to be cross-controlled, with ailerons into the wind to dip a wing and rudders opposite to keep the nose aligned with the runway. This is a slip called a side slip. Don't get hung up on the differences in definition between a side slip and a forward slip. They're both slips and use cross-controlling to execute. The different terms have to do with what it is we're trying to accomplish. With the side slip, we're trying to counteract wind and land parallel with the runway. With the forward slip, we're trying to lose as much altitude as we can prior to landing. Here, our aircraft on final in a given configuration, airspeed, and power setting will see a certain descent rate. If that descent rate isn't quick enough to get us down to the runway at our desired touchdown point, we'll land long and need to go around or risk overrunning the runway. Unfortunately, we can't just point the nose down. We'll speed up and still overshoot. Remember the law of the roller coaster earlier in the course? What we'll do is employ a slip. We'll dip the wing to one side, say to the left, while yawing the nose to the other side with the right rudder. Our descent rate drops and we don't have to increase airspeed in the process. How does this happen? The answer is drag. Aircraft are designed to minimize drag in flight. As we fly forward at fast speeds, the relative wind is right in our face. If a gust of wind comes from the side, the relative wind will veer off to the left here. It'll impact the left side of the vertical stabilizer, pushing the tail to the right and yawing the nose into the new relative wind. You may have learned about this when looking at the aircraft's directional stability. What this does is it ensures the aircraft will typically be pointed in the direction of the wind, just like a weather vane. This is what we want because as we can see from the point of view of the relative wind moving head on at the aircraft, we've exposed the least amount of surface area to the moving air, limiting the amount of parasite drag as we fly. Less drag means a slower descent rate. Now we can use the rudder to force the aircraft to expose more of the side of that fuselage to the air. This will add drag and cause us to sink faster. In order to keep moving forward, we need to also apply opposite aileron. This is what the forward slip looks like. We're still moving forward to our aiming point, just with a faster descent rate due to the cross controls. A lot of discussion happens around which direction to perform the slip in. The best practice is to slip into the wind as much as possible. Here we have a left quarter in crosswind. As we approach in a left pattern, we're going to want to time our turn so that we're over the extended center line of the runway. While we have that left aileron down, we can begin the slip by also applying full right rudder. We'll manage the amount of aileron we use such that our trajectory, our butts, are always being carried towards our aiming point on the runway. Once ready to land, we can ease up on the right foot to point the nose down the runway, and we're nicely set up for a crosswind touchdown. Here's what it can look like from the cockpit. We start lined up on final, looking a bit high. We're gonna dip the wing with some aileron input, at the same time, we're going to kick opposite rudder. Don't be shy. Most trainer aircraft, you'll want full rudder. This is because we'll run out of rudder authority before aileron authority. We can go full rudder and only partial aileron and still maintain a forward trajectory. This is especially true with the right rudder because in a single engine airplane, we're also having to counteract left turning tendencies. What this means is that with the right rudder pushed all the way down, we're going to be controlling for drift using the aileron. So if we find ourselves drifting to the left, we can relax some of that left aileron input and once back on track, bring it back in. Basically, you're doing whatever needs to be done with the aileron to keep your butt moving towards the runway. Be careful not to have an excessive nose up in the slip, but don't worry too much about a stall here. Try to maintain an attitude that will give a constant airspeed. We don't want to defeat the purpose of the slip by diving the nose and picking up airspeed. A forward slip to land will come in handy a number of times in your flying, and you'll be asked to demonstrate it on your checkride. 